Welcome to Te Waka Pambili, the building of a Warham Tiki 38 catamaran. In the last episode, we laid out the pod floor, built up the sides, and put in the port side lockers. This episode, we're going to turn a jigsaw puzzle into the starboard locker, come up with a sneaky rope hinge trick, and devise our version of a rope steering drum. Let's see how we get along. So what we're looking at is the pod. We're working on the starboard side lockers, hatches. And that's what we've got, sort of dry fit. What we found is that it makes sense to, um, when we're working with these kind of really fiddly things that have got lots of bits and pieces all put together, is just to create little sub-components. Um, and that's what we've got going here. So we've got a, a hinge strip that we've created. The side is dry lockers, so there are gutters for water to run out. Um, from under the hatchlet and the front part is kind of a it goes into the control uh, console if you would the um, throttle controls and the engine controls are going to be on a panel at an angle just there in the corner and I've just loosened up this front section so yeah put that together just last night. It has all sorts of odd strange angles in it and what I'll do today is just get to the undersides that I couldn't really see and make sure that I put in significant fillets on the undersides here and get everything cleaned up and strengthened up so that it's ready to go in once we put the rest together. So, yeah. We glued up the sub-assemblies in situ in the pod and used this polythene sheet to stop the actual bits and pieces getting stuck to the pod itself. We obviously weren't ready for that yet. And that hinge strip, rope hinges, as you can see, will be following through with, the, uh, with that theme throughout wherever we can. They do make a lot of sense. Right, so a battery box in the aft section. This one here, we'd actually considered putting a little loose in here and either putting a bucket or a sort of a plop through. These images are from hundreds of hours of trawling through the internet. Um, so I'm not sure who they belong to, but thank you very much anyway. But uh, we've abandoned that idea. We can always change it later if we want to do that again. So yeah, the pod's slowly coming on. And... You can just make out the helm position. So there'll be a section that comes into the pod at a slight angle. Um, and with the helm wheel, we can just make out that circle there. This is the underside of the hinge strip gutter assembly. Yeah. Right, so we've made up these little lugs out of um, some glue. And we've taken a little bit of black poly pipe, stuck it inside a mold. Um, filled it with glue, it's like basically a piece of angle iron um, and then we've sliced them and we're gluing these into several different places for, for several different uses this is along the uh, the gutter at the back of the of a hinge plate and there's going to be a cable run coming along so it'll give us a place to zip tie our cables to Right, let's get a move on and assemble these lockers Right, we're at a point where we're coming to the end of these hatches on the starboard side. Those have got um, little gutters in them, so the hatches are dry. And we're starting to uh, line up and mark out the, the lids and drill those hinges. So I'm going to take you through how we do that. But the hinge strip was in here already, and obviously the holes are in place, so not going to move. And so what we do is, the actual lid, just pop it in, I'm holding it under your ears. So I've marked out these panels so that they're in their closed and correct position. And I've marked out the exact centres of the where the most holes. Now what we're going to do is when we drill these out, we're going to arrange it so that there's an extra hole 
um, starting just five millimeters apart. The holes, the whole centers are, are one centimeter one or ten mils, and we're going to put them in so that they run at a slight angle. And from the um, lid to the hinge strip, we have the ropes angled this way. So the lid lines up, they're pulling inwards on both sides, or the hinge strip is pulling the lid outwards in both directions from either side. So we don't have the lid wobbling from side to side. It's under tension sideways as well. Let's uh, show you how we get to do that. And I'll mark off five holes for this one. Now the fifth hole is actually going to be a blind hole and we're going to use that extra one as a starter for the line. It's taken me quite a while to actually come up with a, a way of actually doing that. I'll just get rid of these lines now so that it doesn't confuse me at some stage later. Oh, yeah, we can just make out that one there. That's very good. And let's give ourselves good wide lines. So they're long lines. They're really dark. And you'll see in a moment when we start cutting all of this out, we actually use that to um, to center our hole centers a second time because we're going to drill all of these out. Now I've kept these half an inch or 12 and a half millimeters away from that edge and it's just sort of a standard that I've developed and what you'll see we'll do in a moment is I'm going to drill out those holes so make a nice deep poke a hole in that softwood Hold 13 millimeter a little bit in, and it tends to rattle around in the soft surface. What I should really do is pop this into my um, drill press, and at least that'll stop the drill from wriggling around and trying to create a triangular hole. But it's okay. We don't we don't need to fuss too much about. Just how beautifully it is drilled right now. Right, this block helps a bit of tear out at the bottom, helps to prevent a bit of tear. Out. And what we'll do now is just give ourselves a guideline. And we'll cut that out all together with the most amazing machine yet. Create a bit of a flare on the top. We'll do the same on both sides. Right, that also positively locks the plug of thickened epoxy that's going to go in there into that space. Um, and then the reason why we had to extend these lines out so far is that once we've got our epoxy plug all in there and uh, it's dried and we sand it off we eventually will keep some of these lines um, they won't uh, disappear because of the sanding we may have to fetch them from quite far away but that's all right okay back to these hinges we're going to clean them up and start preparing them for uh, casting our drill full drill thickened epoxy plug into them so we give them a good old dust out and some acetone bottle. Maybe just uh, two by 20 litres at a time now. 
I'll just decant it into here as we need, need it. Right, so this really just gets rid of any oils that may have made away on there and any dust. It evaporates so quickly. Four point eight degrees Celsius in here now, so this stuff doesn't take long to kind of get on its way. Take our brush and just give it a what we call a soaker coat, just to get in the inside here and make sure that the end grain is fairly saturated with resin or epoxy, so that it doesn't soak the. Um, the epoxy resin out of the thickened epoxy plug that we're going to put in there. Right, so you don't have to be particularly accurate when you're doing this sort of cutting or what have you. That's once you draw the final holes that you need to work a bit more accurately. Effectively, you're just taking this pulpy soft oil and replacing it with a nice, strong, and waterproof uh, substrate into which to put holes into, I guess. I think we'll get started and get some out of the mug. Now, this little sort of technique, if you will, is what I finally figured out eventually. But if you work from the top where the lines are, and you kind of smear it back into the flared out portion, that tapered section that we cut back earlier, it's just so that it's all nice and full. But you just got to be wary of creating voids in there. Right, so I'm leaving it ever so slightly proud over that, that line. And what I'm going to do is I've got a pile of these and we use them for this sort of application a lot of the time. I'm going to put this on the top where the lines are. So that's going to push full epoxy, the thin epoxy rather down into the hole and create a nice smooth flat surface. These have got that brown packaging tape on. What we'll do is in a minute we'll go back and we'll smear that flat or leave it slightly proud even but try just to make sure that we don't have any voids in there and we get the that flared section where our tapes are so they all get right. Again we'll repeat that six times. Right, we'll just redefine these lines so we know exactly where they are. Right, so looking carefully to make sure that you're as accurate as possible. Leaves you in a good starting place to drill through. Right, I find that if I drill a pilot hole with a two millimeter drill bit, then I can work quite accurately. And then a 5.5. Try not to push too hard so that it breaks out the bottom. And then this epoxy is still soft enough just to give it a quick turn by hand with a countersink bit just to create a soft edge for the line to go over. So the line doesn't actually run through these holes other than when you're threading it, but just uh, I think it's the right thing to do in terms of making the, the turn that there's not a sharp edge. We'll glass right over this, so we'll probably clear out these holes and countersink through the glass and the resin as we go a number of times. I've got several different uh, locker lids that are at different stages of the whole process. This one at the bottom here is, um, has been glassed in on both sides. It's totally encapsulated and sealed. Um, the holes have been re-drilled through those ends again, except for the one at the very end. You'll see there are four holes on that side. And I flip it over, you'll see five holes on the other side. So the hole that's closest to the end um, of the the hinge side has not been drilled all the way through. It is a blind hole. Let's see if we can get that to 
Oh, this is the underside of the of the uh, one of the hatch lids, and you'll see these have yet to be drilled through. They've been glassed over. We've uh, sanded down the glass, and that's um, still waiting for the barrier coat to go over that. The line that goes uh, or makes up the rope hinge is four millimeter. It's a four millimeter drill. I found that using a five point five millimeter drill to drill the holes creates enough room for you to be able to manipulate that rope through that whole hinge um, a lot better. I will right, have a quick look at just drilling through the the first hole. Right, so we'll use this glue. Well, I can just see if I lick my finger and wet it out, you can see where the hole is below the surface of the glass. Okay, so if I feel on the surface below, then I know that I can uh, feel it as I draw the strike the bottom layer of glass. Um, I'm not wanting to go all the way through on that first one. I so I just proceed the same way the whole way along. Tiny little dribble in that hole. Get a bit of resin on the end there. Poke it on so that the tape would cut the face of this way. And just make sure that we try and work some of the epoxy into the fibre of the rope. Make sure it's all the way in and set down. And we'll rest this on the table. And just try and coax it so that the line will sit naturally in the route that it's going to take. And we'll do the same on both sides and we'll leave that overnight. So this lid has been glassed, it's been given as a barrier coat and it will be blocked down ready for primer and paint. So our next step will be making the, the, the helm console um, over here. So you'll sort of see where we've got to lay it out. This 600mm wheel is what I'm looking at putting in. I'm figuring out how to actually get the um, the helm lines or the steering lines through the, the curved um, curve in over here which, and then building up the section that goes forward of this uh, front panel um, that's got to come in too. Um, we're probably going to go for a, for a width of about um, 250 mils or so. That's going to be determined by this um, this bilge pump that we've got here, we've got a, what is it, a gusher tighten one of the whale pumps. Um, and that's going to take probably 250 mils on the front of that board. And that will determine the um, the size of that. Um, we're starting to work on the uh, section at the, uh, what I'm calling the helm console. And we're busy putting together a collection of discs just cut out on a, using a hole saw. I'm about to glue them up um, and what I'll do is create a, a cable drum. So using these I'll uh, actually just quietly whittle my my way through um, a screw thread of sorts here. We had to figure out just how much rope we could get onto this uh, cable drum. And we had to mark off oh, the uh, pitch and the lead, um, just so that down. the whole thing followed a consistent helical angle. Or work in the middle of them, so that the lines stay behind on the crests. Starting to cut the screw thread. It's a um, six millimeter um, Dyneema that we're planning on using. And we've given ourselves an 8mm pitch on this thread and we're going to cut it quite deep just so that it stays on the drum. Then I'm opening up those slots a bit more with a, with a panel saw. Then I'll start filing out first with a triangular file just to spread it. Then I've got a round rasp. And we'll follow that up with a rat tail just to make sure that we've got a nice gentle swoop all the way down. And we'll see how it goes. This worked so well in fact that what started out as sort of an experiment soon enough turned into the real deal. You see I've got a pathway for the rope to go through underneath the threads. And then to double back um, 
onto the drum from the outside. So the rope actually winds onto the drum from the outsides of the reel and then um, it peels off on either side from the center off to the, uh, the turning blocks. So once we've got that all glued together, the idea is to then um, run a drill into those holes and mark off the spots where they come through. There it is, and there. Same on the other side. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way they came out. You can just make the pins out over there. This is trying to determine where the holes need to go through the floor of the pod for the steering ropes to go in. So yeah, it's just a simulation at this stage, deciding how it's all gonna fit. We followed some really sound advice to round off the outer corners of the pod just uh, to reduce that bumping hazard for crew making their way past. Now a lot of people have asked us how we make these sexy curves. So pretty much in a nutshell, we take a whole lot of 9mm material cut into strips. You see us circuit coating it here. And in the background there is a 160mm outside diameter PVC tube. And that is wrapped in polythene. And we simply smush this all together with a whole lot of glue or thicken epoxy and uh, wrap it up tightly around that uh, former and uh, cut it open. Yeah, follow along. And exactly the right number of <laughs> boards, well calculated. Well estimated. <laughs> Perfect. It was recommended that we put curves on the front of this box so that no one bumps themselves. So we made these sexy curves. You'll see that they're long strips of flour with resin held in place and then glassed over and so it's going to curve around the inside there Next time, we chop a few holes into the forward panel and get into those cubbies. We also have a closer look at accommodating the motor remote controls, fitting the bilge pump, and hopefully get to closing up the entire forward section. Please do like and subscribe. See ya. Thanks for watching.